Gentle, strong people, inspiring murals and music, mixed with a turbulent social history that includes the forced repatriation of Mexican Americans in the 30s and the unconstitutional incarceration of Japanese Americans in the 40s. Hail Marys, Buddhist chants, Jewish prayers, gospel hallelujahs, oldies, hip hop, corridos and rancheras, they all lift and carry broken spirits, memories, and dreams. Familia I love, you know, and community. And Another reason why I came back here to live was because all my life I've been moving around. My father was a musician, so we lived all over the place a lot of times, you know, all over LA, Palm Springs, Seattle. I never had a sense of community after I was little, after I left the barrio at Tres La Vente. So I never had a sense of community and working interaction with, with people and just having roots, basically. You know, I never really had any roots. So I felt like I could, I could do that here. I started out as a singer. My father was a singer. He sang in a bolero, uh, in a trio of mainly boleros, rancheras. They were a famous group in Mexico. So I started singing as a kid. Then later I got involved with doing some writing. I was interested in, in poetry and and history has been a, a major major part of my interest too. The history of Los Angeles. Uh, one of the pieces I wrote in the early se mid 70s was was called C.S. Con Safos. And it was about the history of L.A., the Zutsu rights, the 40s, etc. I took a trip to Mexico in 74, you know, a whole roots thing, pilgrimage. And I went through Chicano studies and all that, and I, <clears throat> I thought, well, you know, I'm looking to my own history, you know, I, I just check out my own roots. So I took a trip to Mexico, and, um, and man, I, I, everywhere I turned, I would identify myself as a Chicano. I, I really got disrespect, you know. It was really, uh, it was really weird. I thought, you know, they kept calling me Ameri Americano, where I up here, where I was Mexican, you know. I didn't understand that. So I come to realize that, you know, ancestrally I'm Mexican, but culturally I'm not necessarily. And I'm Chicano. I'm, I'm, I'm from here. You know, I have values from Mexico and whatever good I've gotten from up here. And uh, I thought, wow, man, this is really weird. So it was a really, really strong awakening. And that's when I decided that I was going to commit my life to work with material about Chicano experience. It's a beautiful moment that I had with a young girl in fifth grade, man, over here at Trinity Elementary in South Central. Little Mexicana, immigrant girl. One of the ways I teach poetry is that I, I, um, we, do a, we do a 45 minute set and then everybody writes and then we read at the end of the, uh, of the hour hour and 15, hour in this, in this school. This little girl would not want to read at the end of, at the, end of the session, uh, every, at the end of the, the workshop. She just, no, 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 I can't. Everybody else did. And, she, and every time I'd ask her gently, I said, well, you know, it's important that you share what we, what we just did here. And so everybody can see that we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, she would not, she would not. And so then finally we had a culmination performance where everybody had to read. That was part of the deal. And uh, she finally did get up and read. And she did very well, man. And then she wrote me a little letter, a little thank you note at the end of the class when I was leaving. I read it when I got home. It broke me up. She said, uh, Senor Guevara, it was in Spanish. Was, you know, I've never, um, I never knew that I had a voice. I never knew that I could express myself. I never knew I had a me. Yeah. So I said, wow, man, and that's what it's about, you know, the, uh, the arts, poetry, it can open up kids to let them know that they have a voice, that they are somebody. It's going to be a multiple arts program, music, theater, dance, visual arts, film, and where kids in the neighborhood from, I've had kids as young as the sixth grade, fifth grade come in, but it's going to be open for kids in the neighborhood and beyond, free free of charge, to come and to find out who they are through the arts and to share it with their families, friends, neighbors. We do eight-week programs and we do recitals at the end of the eight weeks where we invite the community to come and hear them perform, watch them perform. I want to keep the sense of community alive within them. Not that they was, if they become successful, they leave. 
And it isn't about getting out of the barrio. It's not about that. It's about staying here and, and making it richer. You know, continue the legacy. I'm teaching them about Boyle Heights too. They learn about it. That's part of the process. This, you're, you're, you're a part of a community that has a history, a grand history. And I want you guys to be a part of that history, part of that story.